Welcome to Consumer Labs. Are we all suckers? Apple is getting ready to sell us a technology called Vision Pro. Yes, the technology to build this thing is big. But the real question is, what do you do with it? Let's talk about it. Welcome back to Consumer Labs. We're going to talk about that Vision Pro from Apple. I'm going to tell you right now, it's a great headset. It's got all the hardware. It's got all the specs. You've been hearing about it for a long time. All the specs are out there. But what's not being focused on is the software. We got to talk about that software. Because let me tell you something. If you're going to spend over $3,000 for a pair of headsets, you better make sure you're going to use them. Right? They can't be a toy. This ain't toy land. This ain't a toy. No. It's past toy. It's about business. So, I have here, I have the HoloLens from Microsoft. These are the HoloLens. This is from Microsoft. I have that. I have the MetaQuest. Right? I have also these. I also have other types of headsets. And we do testing with these headsets. Like I said, this is Consumer Lab, so we do a lot of testing with them. We do a lot of try to modify them with our own software, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm going to tell you right now is this. If you're going to spend $3,500, right, over $3,000, right, I'm saying you better make sure you're going to do something with it. And the problem with a lot of these headsets that are coming out, I mean, the market's flooded with them. We all know that. The problem is the software. It's as simple as that. The software is not, I should say, is not really made to have like, like a regular consumer use them. Let's just put it that way. Like, like an everyday person is not going to just sit there and say, oh, I'm going to put on these Vision Pro and I'm going to go to town with them. Nah, it ain't happening like that, right? And the reason is because, first of all, let's think about this. The Vision Pro, one of its biggest cons to the Vision Pro is that you have to interact with your laptop, your Mac computer, in order to even use, like, say, something like, I don't know, Microsoft Office or, or some of the Apple products that they have. You can't, like, download it to the Vision Pro and use that software. I mean, oh, you understand what I'm saying? Imagine that. You just spent 3500 <laughs> I can't say that number enough. You spent $3,500 on a pair headset. And you can't directly. This is something that's not being said. You cannot directly, at least now, directly download any type of software. And I'm talking about real software. I'm talking like Microsoft Excel, even some of the Apple products, right? GarageBand, right? All the, you know, different things that you would normally use it for. Let me just say this. If I'm going to get a headset like that, I want to use it as if I'm using my laptop. Now, I have a Mac computer and I have desktops and laptops and all that type of stuff. But I want $3,500 on my head in my face. Yeah, I want to be using it. As I have a laptop, that's exactly what I want. Yeah, I like the I like the virtual stuff. I like the all that knickknacks and the candy whack. Give me give the dog a bone. That's all cute and everything. But in a day, don't you want to actually use it? I mean, that battery life is only two hours. That's another problem. Like, think about it. If I'm on my laptop or I'm on a computer desktop, whatever it is, and I only could do what two and a half hours, two hours less. What is type of nonsense is that? I'm not using that. I'm not being productive with that. I mean, think about you and your job. Do you stay at work for two hours? And go, oh, I, I work for two hours. I'm good now. I could go home. <laughs> like, for real? Come on. Let's be serious about this. Yes, the Vision Pro, the technology is great. It's fancy. And all these media sites are, are saluting it. Oh, oh, man, it was so amazing. I, I could reach out and I could touch it. Okay, con you know, congratulations. But now, what about the everyday consumer? How are they going to really use it? And this is the problem with a lot of these manufacturers. By, by the way, subscribe to Consumer Labs. We get down to the bones of everything. We take stuff apart. You know, we really experiment with things, you know. But like I was saying, think about this. If you're spending this money, you have to be able to have these vision headsets, these AR, these VR headsets, these mixed headsets to be able to actually do things that is relevant. 
And that's why a lot of these headsets are not selling like they used to. That's why a lot of people started to say, oh, please. Like I said, I, I just showed you the hollow lens. I got the hollow lens, but see, for me, it makes sense because I use it when I design 3D products. I use it for that. I can see the product. I can move around, manipulate like that. But how many people are actually sitting there building 3D, you know, building products? How many people are sitting there actually analyzing products, right? Not too many. Most people are getting these headsets, and what are they doing? They're playing games with them. And nothing wrong with that. Don't get me wrong. You know, once in a while, you know, I dip in and I play a couple of games myself. But the thing is, is that games worth $3,500? Come on. I mean, this is going to be, a, once again, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. This is going to fall under a niche market once again. It's going to be a niche market. It's not going to sell like hotcakes. It's not going to sell like the iPhones that Apple make or, or the headsets that they make. It's not going to sell like that or the Mac computer. It's not going to sell like that. It's just not going to do it. And um, to be honest with you, I believe they understand that. I'm pretty sure they understand that. Because here's another thing that's going to happen is that for you to bring that down to consumer level, meaning that to the average day consumer, especially with the recession, right? There's a recession going on. I mean, think about it. You know, interest rates are high. You got it, right? To bring it down to a point, to a price point, in which is viable, that's not going to happen now. Because that would mean if you would do it now, you would have to take away a lot of the technology to make that happen. You got to remember, this headset, the Vision Pro, have multiple cameras think about that it had the m2 processor in it think about it it have its own specialized chip just to handle the graphics i mean you know look at the mac computer i mean they are very expensive right they, they're like oh we're gonna make a cheaper mac no we're gonna make a mac under 500 dollars. have you ever seen a mac under 500 dollars? i'm talking about brand new. i'm not talking about used and i'm not talking about the student plan right have you ever seen a mac brand new with the m2 chip in there for 500 dollars? No, you never seen it, and you never will. <laughs> so this, I mean, we have to be honest with ourselves. You know, a lot of these sites, these social media sites, they're hyping it up as if people, oh, yeah, go get it, it's worth the money. Yeah, but how is it really worth the money? It's got to be usable, right? It's like having a Mercedes Benz with no tires on it, right? Like, like think, about, think about this. You got Mercedes Benz, you driving out the Mercedes Benz, and you got no tires. I mean, it looks great. It's beautiful. I love sitting inside it. I like using controls and nice, comfy seats or whatever. But I can't drive it. So what's the point of having it? And it's similar to this. You got a nice headset, beautiful, nice cameras. The visuals are excellent. I mean, it makes you feel like you're on a sunny beach in the Caribbean. That's beautiful. That's wonderful. But um, I can't download software to it. Yeah, because guess what? The Vision Pro have its own software apps. <laughs> I mean, this is crazy, right? So how am I going to interact with that? I want to put any application on it. I don't want to be limited to like a tablet, right? Because that's basically what it comes down to. These headsets are like having apps on them. Like, who wants that? I want to take that daggone headset and I want to put whatever program I want. I want it to interact with my 3D printer. Yes, I want to do that. I want to be able, oh, this is my 3D printer. Let me download the software on that. And right now, as of today, the headsets will not be able to do that. It can't do it. It's not going to be able to do it. Why? Who knows why? Apple got their own reason. Could they do it? Yeah, but Apple would want to have a closed environment. So the last thing I'm going to say is this. Listen, is the headset worth buying right now? I will say no. Do not go out there and buy the headset. You'd be a fool to go out there and buy the headsets. Now, if you are a person that, let me give a cliche on that, right? If you are a person that said like, okay, you want to buy it to show other people, to demonstrate it, or you're, you know, you're trying to show the product off, that's fine, nothing wrong with that. Or you may, maybe you might be a person who designed an apps for it, that's fine, sure. But do the everyday average person walk around the street need a, a Vision Pro? No, it makes no sense. Here's another problem with doing headsets. I'm going to tell you right now another problem. Is, and it's the problem with all these headsets is that low lighting, right? If I have these headsets, I want to be able to use them in any type of lighting condition. And this is another thing that a lot of these YouTube guys don't know. A lot of these, these uh, social medias don't know because guess what? 
they they able to talk about technology. They able to get you excited by technology, but they never actually done engineering work on technology. See, there's a there's a difference here, right? You could talk about technology all day, all night, but if you never actually built anything, if you never even have the the background education on it, or ever built, you know done any experiments or anything like that, right? Or ever work with technology, then you know all you're gonna do is talk about the specs. All day long, you're gonna talk about the specs, you're gonna talk about how exciting it is. Oh man, that was amazing. That's what you're gonna talk about. But then, when you talk about the actuality of it, you're gonna forget about those nooks and crannies that actually make a product a product. And in this situation, the Vision Pro, yes, the hardware is very exciting, but the software doesn't follow along. Because, like I said, the last thing I wanna say is that if I can't take those headsets, a $3,500 headset, if I can't take those headsets, and download any type of application as if it was my laptop. Keep in mind, you're paying laptop money for a device that cannot even act like a laptop. I mean, you gotta put that in, in your, you, know, you really gotta think about that. I'm stuttering here because it's, it's just amazing how people keep talking about how wonderful it is, but no one's talking about the usability of it. You get what I'm saying? So, this is uh, Consumer Lab. Yo, please subscribe. We're going to talk more about it. Now, will I go buy the Vision Pro? If I go buy it, it's because I'm going to go show you what I'm saying is 100% right. That's what I'm going to do. If I go buy it, it's because I'm going to demonstrate to you the product and show you that, yes, it got this greatness of it, but it have a lot of flaws that's not viable. And here's the thing. It's not viable for consumers, your everyday consumer. Until next time, Consumer Lab, we'll talk.